Let's talk about fall lawn care and I'm going to give you seven practical tips that you can do and just kind of talk to you what I think about when I think of fall lawn care. What am I want to do the lawn? What do I not want to do the lawn? What can I do to make it look good during the fall but also to get it ready for next year? Fall is a time that can be enjoyable. The lawn can still look good um, but there's also some things I think people do just to waste money and I don't understand that so I'm going to talk you through it in this video. Let's get started. Well, you can see leaves already starting to fall. Grass is still green here. I'm in Alabama. And here's my yard. Now there's some brownness out there. Okay, I understand that. That's I let the grass get too long and that's some dead clippings on there. And whatever. It's my yard. I can do what I want. Um, let me talk to you first about mowing the grass. And I want to get down here in the grass to make this illustration. And I don't know if I can show it as good as I want to today, but I'm going to try anyway. Look in here, this Bermuda grass lawn, if I get down in here and part the waters, if you will, part the grass, you can see a lot of brown down in there. Well, as the days get shorter, one of the things I've noticed is that it ends up being just the tip of the grass. Now, this is a Bermuda lawn. It may be different with other grass types. Of course, your cool season lawn is going to be different. But for our lawns, it ends up being just the tip of it that's actually green. And so... What I tell people is like when you're mowing, especially in the fall, if you want it green, you're going to have to just take the tip off, okay? And that might mean, hey, I've been mowing it on two inches all year long or three inches or whatever it is. And you might have to, to raise that up a little bit. I've done that with this lawn. I was mowing it an inch and a half for a long time. I'm up to like three and a quarter. And if I'm going to keep it green, I'm going to probably have to go up even higher than that unless I want to mow it real frequently because, again, this the tip will be green it looks green from a distance when you part the grass there's gonna be a lot of brown underneath and if you cut it low you're gonna take all the green color out of it so that's tip number one on your mowing the grass and I'd say this when I go to mow the, my own lawn I'm like just take a little bit of a break now I understand your cool seed lawns the weather starts cooling off they might start growing a little faster having a little resurgence from the hot summer weather but for us with the warm season grasses sometimes it's slowing down a little bit and i take that as a time i can take a little break maybe i was mowing every five days i might can cut back to every seven and, it, and as you get on into the fall it might be once every two weeks you know and when, for us when i get to about mid-october end of october it's time to basically shut it down now, the second tip i want to talk about is weed control and i'm going to give you some actual practical examples here in the yard talk to you about what not to do because i think sometimes this can be a waste of money all right what weeds are we dealing with in the summer well there's tons of spurge in the lawn which is a little low growing broadleaf weed but there's also weeds like this nut sedge been battling all summer long very difficult to control now there's two approaches to this one approach is hey maybe now's the time to go after the nut sedge and i can really put in a dent to next year's population but another approach and and it's not so much with nut sedge but let's just say you had a bunch of crabgrass in the lawn for me when i get close to the fall if i'm in you know september october and there's a yard full of crabgrass I'm personally not going to bother even spraying that crabgrass. Why would I? I want to wait for that cold weather to come in and completely wipe out a lot of these summer annuals, these warm season annual weeds. I love when we get our first frost because I know that's just going to zap a lot of weeds. And a lot of times it doesn't even have to get down to freezing weather to take care of other warm season annual weeds. So just understand what weeds you're going after. Again, there's situations like nutsedge where that might be a time that you can put a dent in next year's population. But that's not an annual weed that's a perennial weed if it's a sure enough annual weed that's going to die when cold weather comes then just let the winter kill it and don't worry about using herbicides now some people live where it doesn't really ever drop cold enough to kill these weeds and in those situations you may have to go after the post emergence and another thought on that like i just did a video where i was spraying four different products on crabgrass trying to kill it it's very hard to kill it okay it's, it's just very difficult and it's gonna if you do even if you do kill it you got big old dead brown crabgrass in the lawn right there you don't have a lot of time for other grass to fill in to me common sense just says let it down on its own and that's honestly what i would tell a customer if somebody called me and they have lately to sign up with my uh, lawn care service i go out there and they want weed control and fertilization service i say listen why don't we just start in the fall with the fall pre and post emergent let's let the winter knock out this crabgrass you got a yard full of crabgrass because you didn't have a pre-emergent put down this year let's just wait and start in the fall we'll get ahead of those cool season weeds we'll let uh, the weather take out 
the warm season weeds and we'll have a clean slate starting next year. All right, not to contradict myself, but I wanna give you some of the other e examples of what, where you might not do that. We already talked about nut sedge. Now, personally, sometimes I I'm tired of dealing with nut sedge. I'm just gonna let it die off from the weather and I'll deal with it next year. But let me give you an example of another weed where that's not the case. We talked about annual weeds and perennial weeds. And if I look over here, here's a giant clump of Dallas grass and just in honor of fall we got a brown leaf there that fell right in the middle of it. Now this particular weed is very difficult to control. It's not annual weed. Winter's not going to kill it off. It's just going to go dormant and it'll be right back in the same exact spot next year if nothing's done. But what can I do about this weed? Oftentimes fall is a good time, maybe even the best time, to go after these type of weeds. Uh, Dallas grass, one product that works good on it's called Tribute Total. Some of you are not gonna use that product, but for us with warm season lawns with Dallas grass, it is one of the best options. Well, one suggestion is to use it in October, come back again in November, and then maybe hit it again the following March. Well, it's gonna be more successful during those months than it would have been if you did the same exact thing in May, June, and July, or something like that, because it's just more susceptible to damage during those fall months. Celsius Uncertainty is a good combo. They can have some results on this. I've been using Dismiss and Tribute Total and having good results with two applications just two or three weeks apart on Dallas grass. And I had good success with that in the summertime. I think I'm gonna have even better success with it in the fall. I'm sweating like crazy just being out here. I'm looking forward to the fall weather, just to be honest with you. But if you don't get rid of that Dallas grass and other big grassy weeds like in a Bermuda lawn, you can also work on them during the winter months, uh, even using glyphosate in a dormant Bermuda lawn or pounding them early in the spring next year. But hopefully you've at least weakened them in the fall and taken advantage, maybe killed some, and whatever comes back and you can try to finish off next spring. All right, so the first tip again was mow it high. Don't take the green out of it. Second tip, don't waste your money on annual weeds that are about to die. The third tip, Go after those tough perennial weeds in the fall. That may be one of your best opportunities to control them. Fourth tip is still water your lawn. I mean, if you had a cool season lawn and you overseeded it, well, of course that's gonna need some water. But with our warm season lawns, what you don't wanna do, and I can remember this happening a few years ago. We were in uh, August, September. We went about two months with almost no measurable rain and a lot of grass and shrubs suffered severely and many of them even died. What you don't want to do is say, well, you know, it's almost uh, time for the grass to stop growing anyway. I'm just going to stop watering. Now, again, I'm all for shutting off the irrigation when it comes October. If it's not growing and, and getting rain, it's fine. Just shut it off. The grass is going dormant in warm season lawns. Again, cool season lawns, if, if you just overseeded, of course, you're going to need some moisture there. But what I don't want to do is shut my irrigation off in mid-August and it'd be 93 degrees all the way till the end of September. And now I've got six weeks of drought stress lawn going into winter. And yes, it's going to go into dormancy and yes, it might be fine. But if you put your lawn through a drought stressed fall and then it goes through winter, and let's just say we have a harsh winter that's rough on the grass, it often can have implications of what that lawn is going to look like the following spring when it comes out. So with the following March, when your lawn starts turning green and it's about half dead and you're saying, well, why didn't my yard look good? Sometimes you can look back and say, well, what did I do to it last fall or maybe not do to it that's causing it to look this way now? Another big concern that can happen in the fall is armyworms. The other pests can be around as well, but it was uh, two years ago, I think, there was like a, a not, I wouldn't say nationwide epidemic of armyworms because I don't think they covered the entire country, but they covered a lot of it and they were everywhere. Uh, we had a huge armyworm breakout and I think it was one of the worst in history, at least recorded history. Well, the armyworms come in and they'll just wipe out a yard in about two or three days. Now, oftentimes they're not killing the grass, but they sure can make it look ugly fast. So if you want to get in front of that possible threat, you could use a chemical called a celeprin. Oftentimes armyworms will show up in our area in August, maybe into September. If you put that out ahead of time, it's going to give you some weeks of protection from the army worms. I typically don't do that. It's a little bit more of an expensive product, but if you don't want to use a celeprin, then if you happen to see army worms, and usually if you just find one caterpillar in your yard, it's probably not an army worm. They usually run in bunches and they're pretty easy to see and they love Bermuda grass. But if you see them, then you could go in with a product like Bifenthrin, which is gonna be the active ingredient in a product like Talstar Pro. 
And if you use that, it will knock the army worms out very quickly, not give you a lot of future protection, but oftentimes if you just kill those, uh, they won't be back for that year. But I will say, uh, a couple years ago we had such an outbreak, there was many, many yards that got hit multiple times. Next, I wanna talk about your pre-emergent timing, because I think this makes a lot of sense. And I've had uh, people ask me questions today about the pre-emergent, fall pre-emergent. So let's say you got a cool season grass you're gonna overseed. Of course, in that situation, you do not wanna put a pre-emergent out before you overseed, because that's gonna severely affect your germination rate. But for us with the warm season lawns, I'm gonna use my situation as an example. I treat uh, hundreds of lawns, and I'm in Birmingham, Alabama market. I'm gonna start probably sometime mid-September, and I'm hoping the weather cools off. Now, let's say it's mid-September, it's still 95. I may not be spraying that week. I'll say, let's just wait one more week. I see it's gonna drop down in the 80s, okay? And I'm using a product called Spectacle Flow, but there's other pre-emergents. You might look into Coastal, you might look into Prodiamine, uh, which is gonna come under some different label names. But I'm using that Spectacle Flow, which is one of the best products at getting ahead of POA Annua, and we'll mix it with Simazine and 2,4-D on our Bermuda and Zoysia lawns. On my Centipede St. Augustine, I'm still going with a lower rate of Spectacle Flow and putting the Simazine in there with it as well. Prodiamine is gonna be a lot more inexpensive product, but not gonna give you quite as good a results as far as fighting off Poa Annua. The idea here is I wanna get that pre-emergent down and water it in before we get that really cool night in the fall. Now, if it goes down to 50 degrees one night and then it's back up at 85 degrees the next day, I don't think that's the end of the world. It has a lot to do with the soil temperatures. But if you get several days in a row where it's getting down in the 40s, then that's when those cool season weeds are starting to pop, especially if we get a rain and then it drops down colder. It would be ideal to have that pre-emergent it down before that happens. Same, by the way, with a fungicide. If you know your lawn deals with a lot of fungus and you end up with large patches and stuff like that in the spring, that would be also the time you'd want to have that fungicide down and water it in before that happens. I don't want to put it out too early because I want that pre-emergent to last longer because that pole annual is going to keep trying to germinate. I'm hoping that that pre-emergent is still being effective several months from now. So just understand that, what you're trying to accomplish, and if you'll put that pre-emergent down, it usually makes a huge difference and the amount of cool season weeds that you're gonna see in the lawn the next February and March. Final tip I wanna give you has to go back to lawn mowing, okay? We talked about mowing, we talked about weed control, we talked about watering, but when you're tired of mowing the grass, again, this is gonna be primarily on our warm season grass, especially with Bermuda, what I'll do is when I'm getting tired of mowing, let's say it's, it's late October and I don't wanna mow the grass anymore, then what I'm gonna do, I've been cutting it an inch and a half all uh, through the summer as I had to start raising and as it gets closer to fall, and I might be up to three inches. When I get down to that last cut, I might drop it down to two and a half inches. And I'm gonna cut the green out of it on purpose. I'm saying, do not grow anymore. And I'm putting it out of its misery, it's gonna go dormant. And then next spring, that's just less dormant grass that I have to deal with to get rid of. So the next spring, I, let's say I got down to two and a half, I may try to drop it down a little bit further and a little bit further to get it back down to an inch and a half and get that early spring green up. When you get tired of mowing, just drop your deck a little bit, cut it a little bit short on purpose, and that'll hopefully be your final cut of the year other than like leaf cleanup and things like that. Couple quick announcements. If you wanna to go to the Quip Expo and you hadn't signed up, I'm planning on being there. You can use my code CREEL50, that's my last name, C-R-E-E-L. 50 that'll save you 50 percent off of your ticket also the 2024 lawn care life conference is shaping up nicely coming up february 23rd and 24th of 2024 in springville alabama near birmingham excited about that we got 300 tickets available we do plan to sell out i've got a partner this year we are talking with some great sponsors i think the event is going to be great and we've had people already taking advantage of the early bird special 197 dollars includes all your meals friday night and saturday looking forward to that and again a week of fertilization like me you can go to lawncarelife.com there's also resources for mowing grass uh, there's pricing charts but there's the weed control and fertilization academy which a lot of people take advantage of to help you make the jump into weed control and fertilization especially if you're dealing with warm season lawns thanks for watching leave me some more tips in the comment and we'll see you in the next one